So, <laughs> Boris Johnson's. Oh man, what do you even? Where do you even start with this dickhead? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> what other than the wood chipper? <laughs> <laughs> the billionaire machine, as yeah. Kostrogen posted the other day. Yeah. That was kind of funny. I was wondering if she's going to lose the page, though. <laughs> kind, of, kind of saying out on there anymore. But, um, yeah, I mean, I have, I have a real issue with this, like millions of other people. And um, I think that the best thing to do is start with a bit of context. And what, I, what I'm saying with that is, is what was actually going on, mm-hmm. like at the time, um, what we were having to do as a population. And it was still that kind of like little bit, you know, at first where it was like, yeah, we're all in it. Like, we've got to make the sacrifices. That vibe was still going on. Mm -hmm. Um, But the context was uh, we were being told to only meet one person outside. Um, We were also subject to massive restrictions. There was a hell of a lot of deaths going on. And we've seen so many heartbreaking stories like on the news and everywhere else today of family members coming out and saying, well, I just want his head on a spike. And that's deeply upset, and rightly so. Um, the Dominic Cummins Barnard Castle thing had not broken. That had not happened. And they're having a party with 100 people in, in Downing Street, bring your own bottle. And um, was this like, a, it was 55 minutes and an hour after... It, it, you know that, that they'd been announced that we can only meet one person outside as well, wasn't it? That's right. That, that's uh, it was. The, time so the, 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 Met, the Met Police tweeted, and I think this was on the same day. Mm-hmm. Um, you can relax, have a picnic, exercise, or play sport as long as you are on your own with people you live with, just you and one other person. Fuck I... Right off. Well, yeah, because I mean, I was, you know, I, I was working from home at the time and, and basically kind of really, really isolated at that, at that point in time. But I remember that bit where it was, you know, you can meet one person outside, you know, which was really difficult to do, depending on, on people's circumstances. Um, I know people who were who were like going out and having to, you know, frontline workers who were having to go out and work 12, 13 hour shifts, mm-hmm. you know, and that, you know, they they had to be there like as part of their job. But then, you know, kind of coming back to an empty house and being told they can only see one other person, which probably wouldn't have been feasible anyway. So we're basically just going home and sitting there with nobody until it was time to go to work again. I mean, exactly. that was, you know, and and they would, and that's what they were doing. Um, has has there been any kind of response yet from number t- uh, from the prime minister about this yet? Well, or, or is he trying to persuade Carrie to have another baby in the next sort of five hours so he can look my child and distract you? Know the, the, you know the other twat who brushes his hair with a toffee apple, Michael Fabricant. He's oh, come God. out a, a never a more um, appropriate name, the fabricating twat. He's come out and said, and um, this was a, a, from from his tweets today. Only they were invited to relax in the open air and close. It's try, like <laughs> fucking hell. I, I'm getting so angry even reading this shit, trying to justify this. And closed garden would not have increased the risk of contagion. No outside guests were invited at all. These people had worked incredibly hard on all our behalves on the vaccine program. I'd like to point something out before I bring you back in, Alice. The mm-hmm. vaccine program didn't start for six months after this. Yeah, so I mean, so that's bollocks anyway. Um, sorry, I'm just recoiling at seeing my, Michael Fabricant's name because, like, literally ten minutes before we came on air, I was upset because I thought I had Michael Fabricant hair. Uh, so I was <laughs> desperately trying to change it. Look at the syrup on it, man. Have you seen it? <laughs> Look at the syrup on him. <laughs> that absolute state, man. It's ridiculous. He's, he's got like the the proper. Can I see the manager? Um, haircut has him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, I mean, yeah, go, that's a good point about the vaccine program there. Um, you know, it hadn't, that it hadn't been rolled out yet. Also, there wasn't a, you know, worked incredibly hard clause in all of this. You know, as I just said, I know lots of people who were working a thousand times harder than they would have been. Um, and actually, one thing we've learned through all of this 
actually, you know, because this, this isn't just an isolated incident, is that nobody in that cabinet works incredibly hard. What they do is get absolutely twatted on champagne, you know, do a couple of lines in Parliament toilets to give themselves Allegedly. the courage to make policies that are going to devastate the rest of us it's like do they, do, they do any of do they do any of this sober is that, uh, that from what i can see they don't <laughs> well i've heard it argued quite um like compellingly that like the capitalism runs off massive lines of coke if you look back at the 2008 financial crash there's a, a hell of a lot of beak flying around in the city. And obviously, yeah. as we know what beak does, it, it suspends emotion, but also increases risk-taking behavior. Um, I'd, I'd like to, to hear more about that. So if anybody has worked in that industry and wants to uh, get in touch with us in confidence, please go to milkcowpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks. I'm just like, I'm trying to not lose me rag too early because I will never be able to get through this. I'm absolutely apoplectic with rage. Like the the um the the context as I said earlier is very important on this, isn't it? And it's like what we were having to do at the time and what we were being told like to do as well. Mm -hmm. And you know us we're not um naturals of being like told what to do. You know, no. but we'll do it if it involves like, like looking out for other people. That was my motivator back, but back then and still is. It's like, how would my actions affect other people? Because it would break me heart if I was to um, put anybody else in danger. Absolutely, and I think you know, pretty much everybody around me, their their decision making was made on the same basis. You know, they might have been involved in in things in trying to distribute kind of essentials to you know to to people who who really needed them, but kind of doing that as safely, you know, even then all of that was thought of as safely as possible without, without putting people at risk as well. It was just, it, it was just everything. And it's the, they, they just don't give a shit really. Well, this um, is the thing that that's... don't, did you see that fucking toffee apple twat <sighs> smirking I mean, on the news? Smirking. Yeah. And he can go lick a light socket as far as that. Well, I mean, he looks like he already has, doesn't he? But like it is, no, I mean Michael Fabricant is trash, and he he always has been, and he's always going to be. But I was yeah. talking about Boris Johnson, and it it tells you a lot that there's a couple <laughs> yeah, of top level twats. There's Fabricant. more than one, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh God, it's bad, isn't it? When you when you can't you kind of clarify which one you mean. <laughs> I think there's only one wearing a syrup, though. I think John, <laughs> Johnson's receding too much. He's got that kind like Boris, you know, the Bobby Charlton wrap around, but like it's all like. Here and here and here and here, <laughs> and tweezled around. What he needs to do, like myself, is get himself over to Turkey. It's only a couple of grand, and apparently you don't have to use like dead Turkish granddad hair, which is what I <laughs> thought it was, you know, for the implants. <laughs> I'm seriously concerned now that I know. I'm seriously thinking, oh well, wow, I wouldn't mind a bit of that. But unfortunately, skin right now. But one, like, <laughs> you'll see it in a live stream in the future. I'll have like a full on like. Hi, everybody. Stroking it like a cat. First time oh, since I was in my late 20s and that. I think you should go for some kind of Leo Sayer sort of. <laughs> like, 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 Leo Sayer, definitely. Like a white man fro. <laughs> <laughs> like fall over on a treadmill on national television. Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> That's how old we are. We remember that. <laughs> anyway, back to these bunch of twats. Um. I am absolutely raging, and uh, I'm gonna like take take in some, what some other people say to try and compose myself. So, from the Muslim community, it's Jawad Khan. Give him a follow. We were told we couldn't celebrate Eid to keep our community safe. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister was having parties in his back garden. This government has been mocking us this whole time, doing as they pleased, whilst demanding we make sacrifices. Big one, isn't it? It's like, do you remember how much there was this little sort of the first time the sort of you, do you know what it reminded us of when when the first lockdown was called and the period of time afterwards? You know, over Christmas, like say for about ten to fourteen days over Christmas, where absolute bastards like slap on the fake smile and uh, pretend to be nice. They're mm -hmm. like the living embodiment of the hashtag be kind thing, mm -hmm. which is just obviously uh, an absolute gang of bullshit. 
it reminds us of that where people like were on the best behavior for 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 ages and then all of a sudden it's like i but what about these muslims you know like it starts eking in yeah and i remember what was going on at the time when when eid was occurring and people were on the starting blocks waiting for the muslim community to slip up you know the yeah, slightest uh -huh. thing so some somebody like on the way home from the mosque or something either was three of them walking along yeah, no, that's a that's a really good point because I remember that as well, and there was lots of it going. There, there was lots of it going around, and you know, kind of, yeah, but the Muslims can do what they like, and and all the rest of it. But actually, no, that's you know what the case is is that you know, the, like our politicians can do what they like, you know, the incredibly rich can do what they like, and and what more are we going to let them keep doing to us? It's it's almost like the, you know, again, this isn't the first thing. You know, that's mm -hmm. th that's happened. This is, you know, it's not even the 10th thing that, you know, that's kind of come out. Um, and, and that's not just parties. It's it's all the rest of it. And, you know, yeah, we're we're foaming and we're livid. Um, and, you know, but there's a lot of people as well who are just kind of like, I think by this point, they're just so fatigued with it all. They're just kind of shrugging it off. Um, and I get that. But at the same time, it's like, I, I honestly, I mean, I, I know I've cracked a joke before about like Boris kind of, you know, as we speak, trying to make Carrie like pop out another Ben um, just to try and distract us all, you know. Um, but at the same time, is it even really necessary at this point? Because does he just think like, oh, you know, just ignore it for a few days, you know, and l let it all die down and, and they'll forget about it um, or, they'll, or they'll hold up some kind of sacrificial lamb you know, like they have, you know, like they have done before, like they did with the last one um, with Allegra, what's her face? Allegra um, Stratton. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, as much as I enjoyed watching her crying on the doorstep, uh, you Brilliant, know, it was it? like, yeah, it was <laughs> mint. Um, you know, she she was absolutely, you know, she was really, really low down the ladder of kind of people who were, who were responsible for that. Um, and, you know, and like this has all come about because of a leaked email. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, that's come out where, where it's kind of mentioned, like, bring your own bottle and everything. But why, why is it only just why is it only just being leaked now as well? I think at this point I'm so suspicious of them that something like this comes out and I'm like, OK, we've just got this email. What what bit of legislation are they going to, like, shove past through Parliament without us noticing? <laughs> you know, is this well, last night there was this um, a distraction? <laughs> yeah, you no, know, it is because there was like the, the Labour Party, apart from the usual suspects in the socialist campaign group, abstained from um it was something to do with a cap on benefits and i'm saying it's something to do because i just haven't had a chance to read into what it actually is but i mm -hmm. tell you what it's going to affect millions of people's lives in actuality meanwhile we're talking about these dickheads taking the piss mm -hmm. and uh you're saying like what like what we're going to do about it literally what can we do though like what can we do and one of the reasons we've decided to come back and do this is it, we don't know what to do, but we want to try and do something. And then yeah. hopefully by a period of osmosis and organically chatting with the community and other people, we can kind of work out something to do. But, but right now, we'll, as we'll talk about later in the show, the opposition is non-existent um, without a new entity that comes along to reflect like real people's concerns. What are, what are we going to be able to do? Um, so that's where we are right now, if we're honest. What are we going to do? I don't know. Mm. No, and I don't have the answers either, and I wish I did. Otherwise, I'd be like on here, kind of going right. This is this is how it's gonna. This is how it's gonna go. But it's you know, I think like a lot of people, I, I feel really like, you know, I feel really angry, but like really powerless at the same time as well. Sure. And you know, I've been involved in different kind of, you know, kind of community organizing before and and actions, but it's just, you know, it wouldn't, you know, that we can make jokes about having a revolution or something like that. But like, you know, it's, it, can you see this country doing that at this moment in time? It's it, it no. ain't gonna happen. Everybody's too exhausted. Everybody's like fighting to meet the bloody basic needs um at the moment. But I think you know we do need to look at not expecting politicians to get us out of this, certainly, you know, and I, I think we can all, you know, we can look at pockets of society where that's all already happening. You know, it has been happening for a long time where, you know, where we organise to kind of meet our own community's needs and, 
keep building on that to show that we we don't need them and actually we never have we never have <laughs> no we haven't and we know this because it, until um corbyn came along we didn't like meddle with any of that parliamentary politics thing because the way i look at it is this right there's millions of people in this country who can't afford a conservative or a labor government to get mm. in because it, it it makes like zero difference for them it's like i see a lot of people like um talking about oh we'll call a general election then we'll find out what the british public think and then vote in who north shropshire happened just before christmas and it turned over this massive majority but the lib dems got in mm. what yay brilliant <laughs> What what's what's that gonna do? What is that doing? What are just gonna like jump into another coalition later on? Probably. So it's like we seem to be like it when it gets like even a slight bit to the left of the center, just a little bit, then every liberal bastard in the media starts like going, Oh, watch out, communism alongside the Tories. But I tell you what, they're all attacking the Tories now that it that it's safe to do so. Mm -hmm. That it's safe yeah. that um, somebody who would actually have made a difference would have got in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they they they've they've got a lot of blood on their hands as well, and it's about time they started like uh, like fessing up to what they've actually done. Your James O'Briens, people like that, mm -hmm. like all of this magic grandpa shit. James O'Brien, who voted for Boris Johnson as London Man in two thousand and eight. But he regrets it now. But he's got a book out of called How to Always Be Right. Wanker. Oh, he's, he's, yeah. he's the son of a former Daily Telegraph journalist and public school boy. Wow. And he's the one who's always right, telling us we're always right. Like, listen, he wouldn't know poverty if it hit him in the face with a wet fish. So he, he really shouldn't be like, like sitting there proclaiming that he knows fuck all about anything. Mm -hmm. And he's just one of many examples. The whole of the Guardian can go fuck themselves as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, they, they kind of made the gateway for it all in the first place. It was almost like, oh well, the Guardian are kind of you know doing it. We can all we can all wade in. It kind of almost meant you know because they were kind of they're sort of seen as the lefty, you know, the lefty paper. And it just it just kind of opened the floodgates for the for the rest of it as well. It was the same. Again, the same, we've talked about soundbite politics before. It was the same soundbites kind of going throughout all of the all of the mainstream media outlets. Like all, all of this is as well is in some respects down to them. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the difference between 2017 and 2019 in terms of general elections, there's a, a big difference. I mean, we'll touch a bit more on that in the second half of the show when we start talking about um, Labour and potentially something that we can actually do because we want to try and have some form of like solutions focus, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to just sit here every week and just go, this is all shit, isn't it? We've got to actually do something with this. I just don't know what that is yet. I mean, I've just come back off the, off the back of a big illness, so I'm just kind of finding mm -hmm. my feet in that. But I mm -hmm. tell you what, I like seeing... Um, that twat Johnson smirking on the telly. Um, if I wasn't in a rental and it was my telly, I would have probably stuck my foot through it. Mm -hmm. Like and the other thing about this whole thing about the, about this particular party as well is, you know, and him being on TV today, like smirking about, it, is it, wasn't he apparently in intensive care the the month before this? Yeah, a month happened? earlier. It, it was in in the April, and the party was in the May, and. He was like, obviously, he was giving it all this kind of like little puppy dog thing, wasn't he? And uh, like at the time, we were saying, "Ah, oh, you know, like that's a load of shite, isn't it?" Like he, he had a had a light cold in intensive care, did we? Mm. Like, I mean, allegedly, whatever you want to want to say, but like the given the fact that I've spoken to people with long COVID or like who'd had COVID just a few weeks earlier, you're not ready for no no hundred person party in the garden. It's no. the last thing you're gonna do. So no, there's I, something I think... there's some rabbit out. And we know he's a lying bastard, so it's not beyond the realms of possibility that allegedly he was swinging the lead, as we're saying, Gates said. 
Absolutely. And I don't I don't normally go in for that kind of thing. And I think at the time I even like gave him the benefit of the doubt. I was just like, look, there's no way they're going to, you know, they would have been able to pull that off, you know, without kind of people finding out. So he, he must he must really be here, like, because I know there was loads of people kind of doubting it. But, um, so, you know, obviously, as the as the pandemics progressed, I know people who've been in intensive care um, themselves and I know people who've worked in intensive care and um they certainly wouldn't have been, you know, those patients wouldn't have been going to a party a month afterwards. Yeah. Like, absolutely not. Um, no, no, there's definitely, if he, if he was there, it, I don't think there was any real need for him to be. It was, you know, was it just because he was the prime minister and they were making sure nothing happened to him or, or what? But he couldn't have been as sick as what intensive care patients are when they're in there. Like, absolutely not. That I can't believe. Yeah. Right, we're going to take some um, from the good people out there. Got one here. Lisa Gregory. Hello, Lisa. People will forget about it come election day. They let their greed take over and sneakily vote Tory. You make a really good point. And traditionally, that has been a factor. And I think if the North Shropshire by-election before Christmas wasn't so close to whatever scandal it was last time, Mm -hmm. um, there's that many there's that many outrages every day. You just can't possibly compute the law. But some heinous shit had went on. And that's why the people of North Shropshire voted in a Lib Dem up the revolution. Mm -hmm. Cheers for that, Lisa. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I don't think it's all greed. I think some of it is we're just, you know, we have so much of the, the other you know, othering in the in the media and, you know, like what we were talking about, Jeremy Corbyn, it was like all they had to say, what, you know, when any criticism came of the Tories was Corbyn's a terrorist sympathiser. <laughs> and it was just like, you know, at this point, you know, I'm still seeing people on social media, less and less admittedly, who were going, yeah, but imagine how it, bad this would have been if Corbyn was in. It was like, are you, are you being serious? Are you still clinging to that? Like, you know, it, it's just ridiculous. Eat the rich. <laughs> Eat the <dead> hunt. <laughs> Check out Ancestor Leather, Leather Crafts as well. He makes um, a lot of, like, really cool old school stuff for TV series, like um, historical stuff. But uh, he's quite right. Eat the rich, bring, Eat the your, rich, own bring your own bottle. <laughs> you rely on Jez for a brilliant comment. Jez, like Jez. Yeah, yeah. No, agree. <laughs> Joanne G, I live in a Tory heartland in despair. Uh, my heart does go out there. Yeah. Um, what I've, else? I've got an MP who might as well be a Tory. <laughs> he's, he's not. No. He's not. <laughs> is it the oh. one that I think it is? <laughs> that guy. You're we know me. that guy. We know Maybe that we'll guy. tell that story on a future show about what we did back in the day. Eh? <laughs> it's that guy, isn't it? Oh, God, it is that guy. It is. Subscribe <laughs> to all of the things because we will talk about this one day, but we just haven't got the time this week. But that yeah. was some hardcore business, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Steve Jackson. Hello, Steve. Lovely looking dog there as well in your thumbnail. Oh, um, yeah. Depressingly accurate. Um, join us every week as we depress you in a really accurate manner. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. We won't. The whole, point of, <laughs> the whole point of this is that we're not going to let them get us so downtrodden. I know we are at the minute that we that we feel that we can't do anything about it. But I think yeah. kind of reclaiming our own joy and our you know our own kind of mischief against them is is really kind of what's key in this, and that we won't we won't let them do that permanently. You know, they might kick us down temporarily, but never for good. Correct. You're right. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a nice question here. Daniel Curtis. Hello, mate. Haven't seen your name for a while. Good to see you. Um, can our democracy really change anything? Um, no. No. It's, no. <laughs> like, it's not fit for purpose. Um, right we, right we, back at you, Steve. Depressingly accurate. And two <laughs> little <words. laughs> <laughs> oh. In its current form, let's be honest, it can't. And we, we will do a whole bit piece on, on this in the future, I think, because that is a really good question. So remind us on after this to write down Daniel's question in a future show. We'll do, can our democracy change anything and try and get a balanced view? Yeah. But without um, a change to the first past the post system right now, probably not. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't try. And I mm -hmm. think um, that's a really good segue into the next bit after mm -hmm. this great comment from andy turner hello andy the fact that the opposition is so piss poor makes it even more disheartening but yeah, just yeah. say corbyn start a new party 
there's now no no way they would gain enough seats to make a difference. Sorry to be such a doom and gloom merchant. It's a it's a good you know. I mean, I, I'm going to try and make the case. We're mm -hmm. going to try and make the case um, in the next segment. But before we do that, um, if you are on Facebook, please go to the YouTube channel. Um, you can re really help us um, as we grow the Cow Daily channel. You can find that in the pinned post on the Facebook page, or if you go to the Milk the Cow Instagram page, go to the links in bio, you will see one for YouTube. Click the button, you can go there, and we'll be live right in front of your face there. So if you could just dip over there now, that would be really cool. Um, also, um, if you would like to support the start of an independent media organization, i.e. Cow Daily, brought to you by Milk the Cow, um, what we're trying to do is legitimately set up as a proper outlet. Um, we're joining the National Union of Journalists. Obviously, that costs money um, for the memberships every year. Also, we want to join Impress, which is the independent media regulator, which also costs money. They regulate uh, independent media to a higher standard than the mainstream media regulator, which I believe is IPSO. Um, so... You know, we want we want to do this properly. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't say fuck shit or whatever else while you're doing it. Nobody said that. We're working class. That's how we talk. But that doesn't mean everything that we research is not as accurate as it could possibly be. And we want to be regulated. Mm. We're inviting it because we ain't got nothing to hide in that regard. So if you want to do something, um, that's one thing you can do. Um, also, you can gain access to the Milk the Cow private chat forum. You'll get a notification for that when you sign up to become a patron. So if you could do that, then that would be just really, really helpful. And it will help us grow this, employ people, make this bigger, start making some documentaries where we're going to tell people's stories in their communities, big plans. And with you, we can do it. Good stuff. 